What up, everybody? Matt Lehman, the owner of SpatulaCityRecords.com on the interwebs. Open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 and a quarter and a third quarter days a year. Okay, so I want to try something. I want to I want to see if I can get this running. Uh, I know that everybody that collects records has a story, whether it's their best score or their biggest regret or their biggest mistake or uh, how they found a new artist. Uh, so I want to give you the floor. I'll ask you some questions and we'll get going from there. And and uh, you get the floor to tell your story and, and wow people with your amazing finds. Um, I'll start out uh, with a couple different ones. One of my, uh, I'll get to my my best purchase in a minute, but um, one of the one of my favorite artists uh, is Judy Hensky. Um, she's like a folk kind of like, and this is this is the album um, folk. She's kind of like Janis Joplin. She's got just an amazing set of pipes. And this album, um, actually, I think all three of these, one of my two of them, I ended up picking up online because I sold the first two. Because uh, I'm an idiot. But I bought this large collection. I was still at the shop, so it had Finders Records, Finders Thrift and Vinyl. And had this pretty massive collection come through. And there was a lot of $3 and $5 records, just, just tons of them. Like, I think the collection was probably 2,000 records. Uh, and it had a little bit of everything in it. And, you know, I don't have time to play everything. I play as much as I can. And for whatever reason, this album stuck out to me as I was pricing. And I had already priced these two, and these were on the floor like a week prior to, and they'd already sold. Because um, I knew that I had more, because after I played this one the first time, this is Miss Judy Hensky. This this thing is fantastic. It's kind of it's kind of a live album. It, I think it's done in different clubs or different different styles. So she tells a little bit of story about each song before she goes into it. And each song, she's, she's as funny as she is uh, 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 talented vocally. Uh, and... I'm with comedy albums like I used to listen to them quite a bit but I know all the bits and after a while they kind of get old but I have, I have I'm probably very close to playing this album out because I love it so much that um but her jokes her her delivery is still fantastic to me so anyway they came in I just happened to pull this record for whatever reason the jacket stood out to me I was like ah, I was in kind of a light jazzy or whatever folky music and I didn't I had no idea what it was so I played it and immediately fell in love with it and so then I went and I was like, man, I know I've seen that name in here. And I went through and I couldn't find them. And then I went online and looked and sure enough, I saw these and I was like, I know that they were just in the sh shop like last week and somebody bought them. So I had purchased them again. Um, I'm not a big fan of High Flying Bird. It's a little too light and jazzy for me. This one's, this one's pretty good. This is a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of rain. Um, but those, that's probably my favorite. That and Exuma, which I'm sure you heard me talk about, but I can talk about that at a later time. But um, so getting to my... The biggest, the biggest score, or the biggest purchase I ever made, the best purchase I ever made, uh, was was quite literally a mistake. Um, as they say, ignorance is bliss, and most of my big purchases have come from my own ignorance. Because uh, if if you know my background, I didn't really. Uh, I, I started out buying and selling storage units, and that's I've always been into antiques and stuff like that. And, and I was buying and selling storage units long before the TV show. I was doing it 25 years ago out of Phoenix, and that was that's a whole other story. But that was a lot of fun. But um, and then I just when I opened the shop, records just kept kind of gravitating towards me. A friend brought in her father's collection, and it sold really well. So I used that money to buy another collection, and real quickly it snowballed. Within a month, I was I was a big player in the record market in Coachella Valley, and there was only at that point there was only two real record stores and I quickly became the third and then quickly became the largest um, just because they just kept coming to me and, and it was fun and I enjoyed it so but so this was this was just before the pandemic started so you're talking two and a half three years ago I don't think it was my birthday but it was close to it uh, I know that we were going out to dinner with friends I think we were going out to dinner with Sean who now owns Finders Keepers uh, and his wife Dia I think we were going out that night. So anyway, so I, I'm at, I had just gotten off work and I had just gotten into the kitchen to make a cocktail for the evening before we went out. And I get this phone call. Again, I just got off work. I was already tired. 
and I knew we were going out, so I didn't have time to do much. And I was like, hey, this is Finder's Thrift and Violence Bad. I'm helping. He's like, hey, it's this kid. I can tell it's like a kid on the phone. He's like, I've got this collection of records. I really need to sell it today. And that's usually a red flag. And I'm like, uh, if you got to sell it today, that means it's probably stolen or you're in trouble for some reason. And I don't really want to be a part of that. Um, but he keeps talking. And I was like, well, what is it? And he's like, it's all mostly Madonna stuff. He's like, it's a lot of uh, vinyl. There's some CDs. I said, okay, I don't really buy CDs. And at this point, I'm like, if it's all Madonna, I was like, what's what's the story? And he's like, well, my friend who I'm helping sell the collection was a producer for her, and he uh, has a lot of her back stock. And I'm like, do I really want to have 400 copies of some Madonna 12-inch that I'll never be able to sell? So I'm kind of pushing. I'm like, I, you know what, I, I'm kind of busy. Uh, maybe I get to it tomorrow. He's like, I got to get it out of here today. He's, he's moving, and he needs to get the stuff out of his house. I was like, ah. So at this point, I'm already done. I'm like, I'm not even interested. But for, for giggles, I'm like, where do you live? And he gives his address, and he's literally two blocks from my house. And I'm like, oh, well, I can't pass that up. So I drive the two blocks over, and I take my pickup truck. And he starts, and he, at this point, when I get to the house, they are literally moving out of this house immediately. I don't know if he's being evicted or if he's just done or what. But he has, like, if you're from California, their trash cans are usually, like, this tall, this big, around. He has three of those full, top to bottom, full of CDs. Like, I wanted to just take, I was like, I don't even, I don't even care if there's trash there. I just want to go through them because you clearly don't know what you're doing. Uh... But he's, so he's, they start pulling out all this stuff. They start pulling out all, all this Madonna stuff. And they're pulling out Madonna uh, boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of Madonna, 12 inch and CDs. Like there's so many CDs, it's unbelievable. But the problem with it for me was, is it's all of her, all of these were CDRs. So anybody could copy them and fake them. And it was for Revolver, it was for Jump, it was for Rebel Heart. Uh, I had the Metal Line CD. I was the only one selling those CDs for, and they were selling those for about 200 bucks a piece. Uh, I started out at 200 bucks a piece. The last one I sold was like 100 a quarter. And they were selling all over the world. Uh, and they had uh, just every, all these CDRs I had. So he had taken, he was a producer for it, and I had her almost her entire catalog from that era 2012 I think to 2016 on the Warner Brothers label like it was the Warner Brothers private Madonna uh, library so they had all different cuts and tracks that hadn't been released for specific songs like they'd have one CDR that had one song but it had like 10 different versions of it and he was mixing them and making cassettes and stuff but so I was like I told him I said okay I'm not really interested in the CDs because it to me in my mind those are CDRs. Anybody with the CD burner can burn them, can print the labels, and how much can that possibly be worth? Uh, so I start looking at the vinyl, and the same thing is it's like Madonna Jump, it's like Madonna, uh, I had another one around here, Madonna's Four Minutes with Justin Timberlake, and Revolver, and Rebel Heart, and they've all been crossed out on, because they're all promo copies. And I start looking some of this stuff up. I'm like, yeah, it kind of sells, but what do I need 400 copies of a revolver for? He said, I'm going to be sitting on these for, for decades. And I told him, I said, the biggest problem with her, with, with any kind of dance music, I used to be a DJ, a club DJ. The biggest problem with this stuff is that once it leaves a club, it's done. It doesn't stick around. Now, Madonna has a little more pull and a little more carry. People will continue to collect her stuff. But... Once it's lost the mainstream appeal, you're, I'll, I'll never get rid of them. I, I still have two boxes of the uh, re Revolver, 12 inches, like a double disc. Uh, I have Confessions on Dance Floor. I had the Bedtime Stories, bedtime stories, which was pink vinyl. It's super rare. I had, promo, I had white label promos. Uh, but I also had two full boxes of this. Uh, if you're not a Madonna fan, which I'm not, I'm not really sure that I care. I, I've never listened to this because they're all sealed. This was released in 2011? Um, 2008. So 2008. So it's been a while. But it was, so 2008 wasn't really a big year for records, so not a lot of them were, were sold. But I had 200 copies of these. These were selling for 200 bucks. I still have three left. I'm holding those from my retirement. Um... I probably should have held on to more, especially since in the last two years the vinyl market has skyrocketed, but whatever. Uh, so I, I ended up making a deal with him, um, and at the time I was like, I, I could lose a lot of money. It wasn't a lot, of, I wasn't going to die off the 
deal. I figured I could probably make my money back, but uh, I figured it would take me a while, and I didn't think the CDs would sell ever. And then I started looking up these CDs, and like I said, the, the Madonna, Metaline, I can't remember what it was. I had, I think I had 200 copies of them. Uh, somewhere in the neighborhood 150 and I like I said I started selling those at 200 bucks a piece I made my money back in less than a week uh, and still was selling that stuff for a year and a half uh, he called me back a week later oh I made my money back in a month because um, the first week I the first week I got start, I started listing as fast as possible I sold a couple of things but most of it just sat there and I was kind of like yeah that's exactly it he called me back and said he had more and one of the things that had sold quite a, real quickly was the uh, hard candy so I went back over there and he had another box of hard candy. I actually have the artist proof of that album jacket cover, um, which is like this big. It's it's kind of beat up because you can't. I wanted to sell it, but you can't roll it because it cracks, and and uh, creases real easy. So I still have it, but um, it's kind of cool. I wish it was for a better album cover. That album cover is junk, in my opinion. Um, but so I went back over there, and he had another box of the hard candy and like two more boxes of something else. So I offered him some money on that, and he took it, and then. After I got that second lot, all of a sudden, everything started selling immediately on eBay. Uh, and I'm just like, boom, 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 selling as fast as I can listen. I'm like, oh shit, what's going on? And then people are calling me or emailing me and saying, what, do you, what else do you have? You said you have a lot. And because at that point, the Warner Brothers library lot had started picking up um, and people were, I was selling those off pretty quickly. And so I started making a ton of money real fast. And I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy that's like, hey man, if you want, if your collection's worth ten thousand dollars, and I and you and you want to sell it for a thousand dollars, I'm not the guy that's gonna say, would you take five hundred? Because I figure, well, I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna give you what you want. But generally, I'm gonna say, hey, look, your collection's worth five, ten thousand dollars. I'm more likely to give you five thousand or six thousand or seven thousand, depending where it's at. I'm not looking to retire off of your collection. I'm just looking to keep doing what I'm doing and not have to go back to work for somebody else or, or open a shop again. So I'm not like I've told this story before. Um, I don't think I've told it on YouTube, but I, I came across a collection and uh, it was a decent collection. There wasn't anything amazing. It's just your typical classic rock collection, and it had a uh, third state butcher cover in it. And it was pretty clean, like no seam splits in it or anything. And he had no idea that it was a butcher cover. And I told him, I said, hey, you know, this is a butcher cover. And he just looked at me like a glassy eye, like I had no idea. I was like, well, this this album alone is worth what you're asking for your collection. Uh, I said, I can't do that. I said, and, and I always give people the option. I said, look, I still, I'll still buy your collection for what you're asking. I said, I don't know if you want to hold on to this butcher collection, butcher album. You can sell it yourself online and get more than what I'm going to give you for it. Again, generally, I'm going to give you half or a little bit more, but since it's a butcher cover, I'm going to give you a lot more because I know it's a very easy sell for me. Um, but I'm not going to give you what you're going to get off of eBay. You know, if, if, it, if it's a $400 copy of it, which I think it was probably pretty close. It was, it was super clean. Uh, I said, you, you can get, let's say you can get 400 bucks off it on eBay, then you're going to make, you're going to lose, let's say 20% roughly, which is more like 15, but 20% for easy numbers. You're going to lose 80 bucks. You're at 320. I'm going to be somewhere in a neighborhood of 250 to 300 for it. Um, just because I've got things I got to deal with. I got overhead and stuff like that. So, but you can make more. So it depends on what it is, but he took my 250 and then his rest of the collection. So I'm that guy. So I went back to his house to try to find him to say, hey, look, I owe you some money. But they were, I mean, they were gone. There was no sign of them whatsoever, except for there was like a stack of CDs on the side of the road at their house, <laughs> which I was like, well, all right, take those. Um, so that was probably my biggest collection. I still have, like I said, I still have two boxes of the uh, Revolver. I think I have another box and a half of her other stuff. And I think I still have four or five. Three, three or four or five hard candies and other things. So that was my greatest find. So again, if anybody has a story they want to tell, you're more than welcome to uh, hit me up and I'll figure out how to record you and, and maybe we'll do it on uh, Zoom or something and then I can report, record it and get it up here. But anyway, thanks for watching. As always, spatulacityrecords.com. Buy nine, get one free. All of our records are ultrasonically cleaned and free shipping on $50 or more. Later.